to add a few words about that. It's not about program. We had a fantastic program from the last presidential election. But when it came to practice, practice, when it came to real life, we didn't find anything. All Egyptian found was, uh, you know, accumulated frustrations over wrong decisions, and uh, you know, was pushing the whole community in, in the wrong direction. So, w what is more important than program is the feelings of, you know, attachment and loyalty to this community, to this country, and the, the inside feelings of every candidate that that when he comes to this office, he's going to he's gonna be a positive addition. He's going to be uh, a good, uh, commander, good commander of the situation. Not necessarily coming from military or from any other institution, but the man who will find himself in, 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 in the presidential uh, position, he is faced with huge uh, challenges. And it's, it's really a, a kind of historical move for everyone. When, when the Egyptian people say their word about who is going to be the president, this will mark a new era in Egypt, and a new also era in, in, in the life of, of this person who is coming to be the president of Egypt. So it has to be taken in a very uh, detailed way of what is he going to do, what he is planning to do, how he's going to pick up his, uh, you know, his aides, his assistants, um, how he's going to bring about Egyptian, different, you know, segments of Egyptian people again, the different fabrics of the Egyptian community again together. Do you think this would include reconciliation with the uh, Muslim Brotherhood supporters? Well, that, that's really a sensitive issue because I don't like the, uh, this emotional, you know, uh, refusal of the, the, the word of conciliation itself. Let me tell you from my uh, international expertise in different communities in the world, what happened in Egypt, uh, you know, has happened in, in many other places in the world, and even yeah. worse. We are even much better than many other countries who are... Who happened handled, in Spain, yeah, happened in Spain, Ireland. We're talking about uh, uh, Bosnia, we're talking about uh, Somalia, we're talking about a, a lot of other countries. When during transition, they just, uh, you know, they, they found themselves very down because they lost their military, they got fragmented, they lost their police, got fragmented. So they couldn't, you know, control the, the tempo of life by losing the, the establishment who are controlling the country, right? The rule of law establishment. So the real challenge for him, for, for him, the president, whoever he is going to be, is, is to bring the community together and to, to stop in the way of you know, uh, dragging Egypt into armed conflict or, or more controversial, uh, you, you know, problems. You don't, you don't really, uh, you're not convinced with word conciliation. What, what is the practice that you're looking for in terms to have the communities all together back again? And to have peace again. Well, l l well, I thank you for the question because the, the, the concept of conciliation itself has to be a little bit identified. Conciliation doesn't mean that we are going to shake hands and, and get back together as if nothing has happened. No, yes. it's, it's totally far from reality. Conciliation doesn't touch the fact that the rule of law must be maintained. Those who have committed atrocities or, or uh, terrorism activities, those who have, uh, you know, pointed arms and used, uh, you know, uh, w w any kind of, of violence whatsoever against uh, civilians or, or uh, against the state, they have to be uh, judged in, in a free and in, in free, fair, and just trial. But the, on the other side, you are talking about uh, a big segment in Egypt, Muslim Brotherhood. They are, uh, they are, uh, uh, you know, they are, they are still part of the Egyptian community. Most of them, probably, most of them are not uh, following that course of, you know, violent action. So they are thinking about getting back, but they are waiting for uh, an initiative to bring them back to the, uh, the uh, to be embraced by their community. So, yeah. uh, well, uh, Dr. Ibrahim, I'm going to move on to another um, uh, subject that we just brought up with the introduction about the British announcement from David Cameron and um, the British order uh, for the intelligence agencies to gather information on the philosophy and activities of the Brotherhood and its potential threat to the UK. What are your thoughts about this particular announcement? Well, I think that is uh, uh, a dramatic change in the international uh, uh, arena or Policy. scene. 
in terms of dealing with Muslim Brotherhood uh, uh, recent it activities. It should be something positive, negative. Well, I, I see it positive in a sense that the, out, the outside world started to see things in a more a genuine clearer. way, yeah. in a more realistic way. Because they kept for a while thinking that, uh, you know, um, that those people who are committing some, some of them are committing terrorist activities, they look at them as just a political uh, opponent. It, this is not political activities that are being committed in Egypt. is, is a fully fledgling crime against uh, civilians and against police. So when when uh, Prime Minister in the United Kingdom uh, took this initiative uh, uh, yesterday, it was a sign that they started to realize that they they themselves are going to be threatened to the threat. by the well. Don't you see that once they felt they were being threatened, then they only started moving well and I realizing. Well, I don't alienate <laughs> this possibility. By the way, I mean, well, they they, they could feel safe. They didn't learn from the historical, uh, you know. Uh, precedents of, of such time Sunday. before, uh, like what happened with Omar Abdul Rahman in the United States, and when and later he was imprisoned and judged for accusations of, of committing uh, crimes or, or terrorism activities. Well, it's 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 so. The, yeah, I mean, I I tend to to believe that when the when the threat comes actually close comes to them, actually close to them, then it's a different vision. They started to feel the heat in, in their faces they started to respond, which is, uh, anyway, I mean, it, it's so positive I for mean, us, you know, cases, I yeah, mean, in all cases, okay, uh, now if they, they, they might believe that what is going on in Egypt is not just political, uh, you know, uh, struggle, it's, uh, it's criminal and terrorism activities being committed on daily basis right. against, and the identity uh, of Egypt. against so civilians, not only against police and military, and such activities is totally condemned under any circumstances, whether yeah. under religious circumstances or concepts of religion or political uh, concepts of, of uh, you know, exercising political life, that's not the way how, how uh, political powers should act when they feel even, you know, I mean, something was taken from them uh, uh, out of the law or, or, or legitimacy, so they can get back to the streets if they are fully supported as they say they can get back to the people because Egyptian people have the, the last word in everything and pre a presidency a, a, a election is or presidential election is coming very soon and then the people will go out and, and say their word I mean they block the way in their own in their faces by committing such activities by resorting to some of them I, I should say some of them resorting to violence blocking the way of return for them and causing huge uh, uh, worries and concerns in the Egyptian streets because still they are Egyptians. We cannot deny that fact. We we were we're living together in one place. We cannot just all of a sudden, you know, take this part out of Egypt and throw it away. It doesn't work like that. Yeah. So they have to realize very soon that they have that to get that's back. That's a very to objective view. Yeah. yeah. Actually, to look at things. Uh, but if we move to uh, the uh, just a few hundred meters from here uh, with the clashes of uh, Cairo University and uh, which left one uh, police officer dead and several injured. Um, the continuing you know, series of clashes between uh, the security forces and the students uh, who are protesting uh, within the campuses. How are you seeing this issue today? Well, it, it's... Uh, and well how can we resolve it? Well, yeah, the, 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 the main question is how to get out of this, uh, of this narrow uh, tunnel. Actually, the it's light is uh, not seen yet. The, the, the question now is how to get out of this light. Let me tell you that that takes us also to what you just asked a couple of minutes ago about uh, the possibility of conciliation. Um, not necessarily, as some people might think that, as I said, conciliation is not just well, let's forget what happened. No, conciliation means that I have to shut the way in the road of those who did not commit any criminal activities. I have to get them back to the, the, uh, the community That's as normal true. citizens, yes. as good citizens. I see the students at universities are more victims than, uh, than criminals. Even while, while they are committing this, this kind of violation, but they still they had like a wash, uh, a brainwash, 
because they are um, manipulated by the leader, by, by the big. Dr. Brahim Razawi, uh, uh, definitely you have a very objective way of looking and um, uh, I, I really appreciate your approach in trying to have a sort of um, a resolution for this uh, uh, situation. Uh, at the end, I'd like to thank you very much for joining us. It has been a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you very much, Dr. Thank you. Thank you. Now let's move on now for this short break and returning back tomorrow.